fashion is a, a a union of society and nature and why it, it's really uh it's really bizarre that we look at two things that's like two separate things because you know like without the society and without the nature like together working in commune there would be no fashion My name is Dishan Chopra and I'm I'm the founder of Oshadi which is a contemporary women's wear brand and now a fashion collective uh setting up a regenerative seed to sew supply chain in South India. We started as a women's wear brand back in 2016 with a aim to connect uh, the rural economy with the modern consumer base, rural textile economy with modern consumer base and slowly uh with a lot of curiosity uh, about the materials and the dye stuff we we started the journey of going deep within the supply chain and of course everything uh, starts with a farm organic farming is a a part of regenerative farming i would say regenerative farming is more like a holistic farming which is not just about uh the the farming of the main crop but it's about the ecosystem in the farm within the farm it's about the lifestyle uh around the farm and farming systems and um, when we talk about organic farming we talk about uh not adding chemicals to the soil but when we talk about regenerative farming it's about uh not adding chemicals but a lot more uh, where how do you improve the soil health how do you um how do you improve the soil which you dug into for years and years and years and you know eroded the soil top layer of soil and it's gone at so uh, such low levels that now it's the time to you know build it back on and uh, that's with the soil and uh, the second things are like the water like you know for us uh, it's about using not just the water from the main public bodies but creating like systems where the farms create their own water systems beneath it and using it uh and not feeding off the main water bodies and um uh, treating animals uh in a in a in a more humane way and not just like having industrializing animals but uh taking care of them and you know make an exchange not like an extraction like how do i extract something from a cow or how do i extract something from soil and uh, how do i ex- extract something from the system around us it's more about like how do we exchange how we live in uh, harmony how we live as a community in india the farms are like very different compared to the us in us there are like uh, there is like 10000 acres of farms at stretch and even like some of the, some of the times like i i speak to people and they're like hey i have a really small farm and i ask them like how small is your farm is like 5000 acres like oh my god like in india in india like an average farmer has like 2 to 5 acres of land and which is like a good thing and a bad thing at once because it's a good thing uh first uh, uh, firstly because like just because they have one or two acres of farms everyone's farming a lot of different things already so if they were to like uh make a regenerative farm or like you know create a regenerative village i would say not just a, like a farm um people would already be doing many diverse things like people have coconut trees or like people have palm trees and people have like mangoes like bananas like all of that stuff like growing and you know all together so when you look at like a bigger picture of that village it's already regenerative in a lot of ways uh you just have to like you know make sure you're not exploiting the soil and you have to bring back like cover crops and you have like in especially in like south of india where i'm from the traditional practices still prevail at a very small level but if you listen to like the older people who are around you you know who 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 are really like you know who are a wealth of resources and you, you know you get like bits and pieces from different people because a lot of information is lost and you bring it all together it's easier for us to make a switch but sometimes i also think that since there is like a 10000 acre land in us which one person manages you just need like one thought process to completely change the 10000 acres whereas in india like you have like 10000 people holding like 10000 acres it's difficult to 
switch 10,000 brains, you know, 10,000 uh, 10, human brains, uh, you know, together, where you can just go and convince one 10,000 acre person to do things rightly. And like, you know, you can change things really fast. Personally, I think uh, regenerative agriculture is, uh, is not so difficult because you're you're literally just like mimicking the nature as Ricardo said there's nothing so complicated there's no complex complexity of things it's just basically like living in harmony with nature you just like take things from here like you know you're just restoring things and when you restore things it start, automatically starts like improving itself and you don't have to do much when you restore things the things start like working in harmony and the ecosystem like starts coming back together and you know you start like the soil starts getting back together like the rodents the animals the birds like all of them like you know you like you go to a forest you no one waters like a tree every day like who goes and waters like tree in the forest you know they they have their own ecosystem they're surviving and who's like feeding like tigers or like elephants every day like you know everyone like you know if you if you if you go back and like said you know leave things just as they are they would they would thrive on themselves like you know we think hey we are humans and you know we are the smartest people like smartest creatures or organisms on the planet and we have to like uh, we have to like we are like you know we have this bait and to go change things and things like no like you just have to relax and just let it be and and we just have to like let things happen you know in the in in the way they they happen When a brand starts a relationship with a supplier or like a community, um, there's a basic mindset that, hey, can I get this price point? And if I don't get this price point, I'm going to make a switch. Uh, it's not that like brand cannot withstand that $1 or like $2 price increase, but they'd much rather have that, that really low margins, you know, like that $1 or $2 is not going to make a difference, but that $2, like a lot of brands like stick onto that and try to make sure like they get that. And in order to get that, they keep switching the supply, uh, supplier and like the community and like the things like, and that kind of relationship again is like a very exploitative relationship where you get something out of someone and then you just like bail on them when, you know, and then sometimes they, Every brand has their story of like, I style this with style, uh, I style like this piece with this piece and I want to look cool. And, you know, sometimes like it's okay not to make a piece because it's not sustainable to make that piece. You know, you could, you can design another piece and, you know, it's not so difficult. Like you have a great design team, you have a such fantastic design team. You don't specifically have to make that piece in an unsustainable way to make sure your collection is complete. And I think these are like small, small thought processes, which can, you know, just like a slight, uh, a slight twist to that, uh, that thought process could, could, you know, uh, create like better relationships uh, and a better supply chain. Coming back to the fantasy thing, fashion has evolved in a way that it's looking at a desire of one person or one specific brand. So let's say there's a brand, it's, it's, it's portraying design designs and it's, it's portraying desires of the creative director or like the brand's aesthetics. But people don't realize that, that, you know, we live in this one world and everyone has desires. Like the person who was picking the cotton has, has like, you know, her desires, the person who's weaving the cotton, she has her own desires. And person who is like spinning the cotton, like everyone has their own desires, but like the people who are on top, and you know, like through the power of wealth, uh, through to uh, through the power of fame and society and like status and things like that, they, I think, uh, um, often they they tend to forget that that like you know that they have their own desire. They want to have this house and they want to travel in private jets and they want to like do these things and like. You know, they, they always like get disconnected that every single person like, you know, just like them wants to have a good family. They want like kids to have better access to education, kids to have better access to like healthcare. They want a family, they want to go back home and, you know, like sit, have a good time like uh, with, with family, friends, like everyone has that kind of things. And I think if people just start to realize that, that single thing that, you know, we are, we are one and, you know, like 
go away from this mindset of this it's mine and like you know nothing is ours like you know not you know we just come in we are just this vessel we are coming in and going out of this vessel we are coming in and people just need to um you know have to have a basic understanding of that